Hi all, uh, my name is Lily and I hope you are having a great time enjoying Test Flix 2020 um, binge. I have lots of interesting stories to tell you today. Uh, some of them are funny, some of them are frustrating, uh, some of them are heartbreaking. Uh, I, without spilling uh, more beans here, I would go straight to my talk. Uh, we have just eight minutes. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, this is a little bit about me and feel free to visit talesoftesting.com uh, to find more about me and my work. So here comes the first story of horror. <clears throat> adventure and panic. So I was with my family in this interesting place called a movie park, Germany. It's a very nice amusement park uh, with lots of roller coaster rides and different kinds of things and attractions for the kids and adults alike. So, so it so happened that I, I was riding this uh, roller coaster ride and after I was done, I started searching for my family. My wife and my kid were enjoying other rides um, uh, in the park. But I noticed my phone, my iPhone got uh, stuck. It, it automatically decided to contact my emergency contact, notify them, and it stood frozen on the screen. I couldn't make any call. I couldn't receive any call. I just could not do anything with my phone. Um, that resulted in a panic situation because my family got this emergency notification, but they were not able to reach out to me. I was not able to reach out to them. We had to search for each other for quite two hours. Finally, we got hold of each other. My family also got contacted. They couldn't reach out to me. This, this, this unnecessary triggering of emergency contact notification or SOS, you call it, I do not know what caused it. I do not know if there was some accidental button that got pressed or if it was because of some sudden movement up and down. I do not know. Uh, but this was unnecessary. This software bug costed me three to four hours of my very quality time that I could have spent with my family in the theme park, which was obviously the paid time. And the trouble, the panic, the worry that it caused was unnecessary. We do not know what implications it could have had. And this all happened because of some unexplained each case scenario of SOS call automatically getting triggered on iPhone. Even connecting the phone to the cable and charging it was not helping. I had to find out some hacks on the internet to finally get rid of this frozen screen. Sorry, Apple, poor show. Here is another story. I was traveling from Hamburg to Malta and there was a layover in Frankfurt. Um, I used this automatic uh, luggage check it, self baggage drop um, of Lufthansa, which was supposed to check my luggage until my destination uh, place. And I assumed it did. Unfortunately, when I um, got down at Frankfurt, I was notified that I need to pick up my luggage. I had literally only 45 minutes to pick up and then transport it to the next flight. I naturally missed my another flight and I had to make emergency bookings for another uh, airlines and then going to another place, staying there for another 24 hours and then finally reached to the destination where I had an important meeting that I was supposed to attend the next day. All because of a software glitch which Lufthansa could not explain and um, this costed me a loss of more than $2,000, which was unnecessary emergency expense. It costed me the loss of my rental car bookings, uh, one night stay of my hotel that was supposed to be there that day. Uh, extra bookings, extra hassle, lots of arguments and discussions with airline add, add really no help, nobody to responsibility. Though this software bug was very real, it, I do not know how I became the lucky victim of the situation, but this was not very uh, repeatedly occurring scenario. But the fact that it happened and I, I got affected as an end user with lots of losses that I cannot even claim, this was unnecessary. This ace case scenario really costed me a lot than I could afford. Another interesting story, the great mind first caused by Alexa Kindle store. <clears throat> so, I have Amazon India account. I also have Amazon Germany account and I have been using this Alexa device on my German account. And I realized that I was not having access to most of the applications and features that I should have had 
on my German um, geography. To my surprise, I noticed, I investigated and found out the host name for my Alexa account has been Amazon India. And I do not know who did this or who decided this on my behalf, but somehow, somewhere Alexa or Amazon decided to connect these both. And I'm still trying to handle this mismanagement because when I go to Amazon Germany store, it says my default Kindle store is in India. When I go to Amazon India account, it says my default Kindle store is in Germany. And this problem is still not resolved. I do not know what kind of integration happened. I do not know what kind of migrations happen, but I'm at the suffering end. I'm at the receiving end of this problem, which I did not choose to happen for me. Again, could be that this doesn't happen every day. Could be that people are not having their accounts migrated from country to country, geography to geography, but this still affects us. This affects my usage. This affects my user experience. This affects my ability to use the application to its full potential. The problem is the so-called age case scenarios are costing us a lot to people, even if they are small in number. And this is exactly why I would like to make this point that we should do something about it, even if these are so-called age cases. They are costing a lot to people and we don't know how much we cannot predict. So what is it that we are doing wrong? In my opinion, big story, small, as, as Jess Weaver from Models says, companies push for scale and growth at a breakneck pace that they are weaponizing technology against groups that fall outside of their defined happy path. And this is exactly my problem. We are so much behind faster deliveries and shipping the features that we are deliberately choosing to ignore the small amount of people or the users that are affected. But small number of people affected does not mean the impact on business is bad. Feel free to search internet and see how age cases can affect the functionality of artificial intelligence, what kind of blunders it can create. I cannot emphasize enough on taking age cases seriously. And since I have just 30 seconds left, here are some of the things that I personally try to follow as a tester. I, I highly recommend you to stop uh, blaming it or stop shrugging your shoulders, just calling it that yeah, only small number of users are affected. This will not happen to many people. You do not know how badly people can get affected even if they are small in number. So who gives a crap? We do, we tester should do. And how do we do it? I would strongly suggest to be conscious of quality and the risk always. Have empathy for users. Study about survivorship bias and see how you're making your decisions based on the analytics that are available to you. Small segment, small segment affected does not mean smaller business impact. Don't just identify problems, but also evaluate underlying risk as a tester. Try to communicate this risk effectively. Make your testing strategy and testing to revolve around the risk. Talk to users, take their surveys and their reviews and feedbacks and ratings seriously. Read and analyze production logs. Lots of tricky situations can come to notice from there. Practice domain testing, sampling beyond equivalent partitioning should help. Do exploratory testing. Try to use heuristics like uh, creep and leap, focus, defocus, refer to James Buck work uh, or rapid software testing literature for that. Or feel free to talk to me. I can happily explain. Test early, test often, and test to find risks. And most importantly, communicate the risk effectively. I'm sorry, this topic is pretty broad. Even the ideas that I would like to suggest to overcome these are broad. Eight minutes are not enough, but feel free to reach out to me to discuss this topic more. I'm going to work more on the theme. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much. And I wish you a great time ahead with the rest of the talks. Thank you and bye.